McLaren has designed and built a totally new Can-Am car for 1972. It's the M20. Featuring high downforce aerodynamics with a ground effect front wing and the huge rear wing putting the power to the road. Its engine, the alloy Chevy V8, increased to a massive 8.3 liters, 750 horsepower plus. A look at Danny Holmes' cockpit. There is word a new team will challenge the McLaren. Enter Porsche. At last year's 24 Hours of Le Mans, Porsche approached Roger Penske and Mark Donahue about developing a new Can-Am car. And this leads to a new partnership, the Penske-Porsche Can-Am team. Porsche had several ideas to explore. The first development was a huge 16-cylinder engine. But its designers decided to engineer a completely new power plant. Mark Donahue, driving for Team Penske, won the Indy 500 two weeks ago in a McLaren. Here at Mossport, Donahue drives the new Porsche. Mark is also an engineer, and he's worked with the Porsche factory over the winter, developing the new 917-10. The body, like the McLarens, is designed for high downforce. The engine is a 5-liter, air-cooled, 12-cylinder with twin turbochargers pumping out about 900 horsepower. The immaculate Porsche Turbo takes to the track. Reigning Can-Am champion Peter Revson back with Danny Holm and the McLaren team for 1972. This year, Revson and Holm are also driving together in McLaren's Formula One team. The Shadow Mark III, designed by Peter Bryant, driven by Jackie Oliver. As practice begins, the Chevy men witness the speed of the Porsche Turbo. Mark Donahue in the new Porsche Turbo has the fastest qualifying time. Big crowds and thousands of colorful tents cover the Mossport landscape. Mark Donahue, you are the full winner for this year's Labatt Blue Can Am, and do you have some thoughts on that, Mark? Well, the pole position is the matinee, and uh, the feature is today, and uh, it's a 200 mile race, and we'll have to see what happens. blasts into the lead. Revson, Holm, and Oliver in hot pursuit. Donahue and the Porsche in a display of shattering speed. But now Peter Revson takes the lead. Donahue is slow and heads for the pit. sticking valve in the turbo system and Mark rejoins the race three laps down. Revson is leading the race when with two laps to go his engine blows. Holm takes the lead. The bear 
Denny Holm wins Mossport, and Donahue charges back to second position. There's the winner of the uh, 1972 Can-Am, Denny Holm. Good to have him back, and he's looking well. Standing beside him, of course, is Mr. Levant. Team Penske arrives a week early at Road Atlanta for pre-race testing. Mark Donahue explains. Going down the back straightaway, the wing, which produces a tremendous amount of downforce at, at high speeds, uh, came off the back of the car, and as a result, the, the whole rear section of the car became airborne, and the car backed into a not quite 90 degree abutment, and then uh, began flipping down the top of a guardrail. Mark is injured and it'll be weeks before he can drive again. The Porsche is completely demolished. With Mark Donahue out for several races, Roger Penske calls upon George Fulmer, who has just won the Trans Am Championship, to drive the Porsche 917-10 turbo. The race starts. Holm and Fulmer are leading. On the straight over the hill crest, Denny Holmes' McLaren becomes airborne at 175 miles an hour, flips backwards, and careens upside down for several hundred feet. Denny is unhurt, but the McLaren M20 is destroyed. It's the same straight where Mark Donahue crashed just a few days ago. Fulmer wins his first Can-Am, and Porsche scores its first victory with the turbo. Porsche has invited the German press to Watkins Glen to showcase their crushing Can-Am superiority. Even Dr. Porsche has come. The McLaren team has built Denny home a new M20 in only nine days. It replaces the car that was destroyed at Road Atlanta. Porsche and the German press are surprised to see an all-McLaren front row, as Revson has won the pole and Holm is second. The race starts and Denny grabs the lead. Homer and Porsche struggle. This weekend, the Can-Am cars are once again faster than the Formula One lap record. David Hobbs in a Lola and Francois Sauver in a McLaren, both charged by Fulmer and the Porsche Turbo. Home wins. Revson is second. Fulmer finishes a distant fifth. Porsche and the German press are visibly shaken. Practice for the Mid-Ohio Can-Am is under sunny skies. Mark Donahue is still out of action. Race day has a threat of rain. George Fulmer leads from the pole. It begins to rain intermittently. Denny gets sideways. Roger Penske makes a tough call, which George explains. I kept looking towards the pits each time coming by, trying to get a signal from the captain to tell me to come in and get rain tires. Uh, after four or five laps of scaring myself to death every lap, he gave me the signal to keep going, so I settled down to drive the turbocharged 917 in the rain with dry tires. I must say, it was a very challenging afternoon. Jackie Oliver drives the entire race on dry tires and is rewarded with a second place finish. George Fulmer wins mid-Ohio. The Porsche Turbo, finding its speed again, is back on top.
Laguna Seca, the eighth Can-Am round. Mark Donahue is back at the wheel, joining Fulmer. Porsche has tuned its turbo engine specifically for this tight track. A Porsche front row leads the pack. McLaren, even in its best years, never enjoyed a speed advantage this decisive. The Penske Porsche team dominates the race. George Fulmer wins Laguna Seca and clinches the 1972 Can-Am Challenge Cup. Porsche wins its first Can-Am Championship. Riverside, the final round of the season. And there is a rumor in the pits that this could be the last Can-Am race for Team McLaren. For Saturday qualifying, McLaren has installed a special engine in Holmes' car. It's the biggest Can-Am Chevy V8 ever, 9.3 liters, producing about 800 horsepower and twice the torque of a Formula One engine. Roger Penske comments, and you can be sure that McLaren would try every trick to try to win the last Can-Am race. They even installed a special qualifying motor which knocked Mark off the front row uh, by just a few hundredths of a second. On the pace lap, it's an almost surreal setting. Homer sweeps into the lead. Denny out, Peter Revson is in second place. Can-Am champion George Fulmer wins the final round of 1972.